Hi thinkers, welcome to the coding interview preparation course on ThinkX Academy. In this playlist, we are going to discuss all the important tricky questions that are being asked in the coding interviews and I am going to pick them and I am going to create videos on that. The first question that I have picked up is the difference between the asynchronous, synchronous and the multi-threaded programming. So we are going to discuss this problem and how to answer to the interviewer and what are the type of questions that an interviewer can ask you within these concepts. So first of all, we are going to assume that we have these three tasks here. So you can see this is the task one, this is the task two and this is the task three. And you can see I have written here the time that these tasks will take to complete. We are assuming these, right? So let's say the task one will take six seconds to complete. The task two will take three seconds and the task three is going to take two seconds. And you can see that I've divided this task in uh, respective slots. So you can see that in the we have six slots in the task one, which means which, which are divided into six seconds, right? So similarly for task two and task three, we have the respective time slots, right? So let's discuss the first one, which is the most simple one, which is the synchronous uh, programming, right? So these are all programming techniques. So uh, multi-threaded programming, asynchronous programming and synchronous programming. These three are the three programming techniques and as a programmer you must know when uh, you should use which type of programming method, right? So for the first one we have the synchronous programming which is very easy. Now in this one what happens is let's say we have a CPU that is going to execute uh, that uh, these uh, will execute these three tasks here so what we want to do is we are going to use these three techniques uh, to complete these three tasks. So basically the CPU is going to use these th uh, three techniques. Now the first one is synchronous and synchronous we have these three tasks. So first the CPU will complete the task one, right? So first this is going to get completed after uh, we have after the CPU will complete the task one, the task two will be started and after the task two is completed then the task 3 will be started. So it means that in, a, in synchronous programming basically the next task will only start if the previous task has been completed. In such type of environment you can see how much time will it take uh, for the CPU assuming that these are the time. So for the task 1 it will take 6 seconds, for the task 2 it will take 3 seconds and for task 3 we have 2 seconds. So in total we have 11 seconds. So in synchronous uh, you can see the CPU will take uh, 11 seconds to complete all of these tasks. Now let's take a look at the multi-threaded programming and let's understand how the CPU will complete these three tasks. Right? So in the multi-threaded programming as the name suggests here we have m uh, multiple threads. So basically CPU is actually a processor or the central processing unit and it will have multiple cores in it let's say there are four cores or let's say there are eight cores and in that cpu we will have multiple threads inside them and these multiple threads are capable of running parallelly uh, inside of a cpu so what this type of cpu has is it has the ability to perform multiple threads to run multiple thread of execution so in such a case uh, the task 1 task 2 and task 3 will be assigned to the threads or we are going to call them as worker thread 1 so this is actually a worker thread Right, so worker thread is basically a thread which the CPU has assigned the work or the task, right? So let's say the CPU assigned one worker thread to task 1 and the second worker thread to task 2 and the third worker task to task 3. These threads are going to complete these tasks and they can work parallelly which means that uh, they are going to work uh, parallelly and it is going to take lesser time than here. So let's see how much time will it take for a CPU with multi-threaded uh, capability to, uh, to do all these tasks, right? So this task will take 6 seconds, 
and uh, in these six seconds, the uh, three and two will or these two worker thread will be able to complete the task. So it will take zero seconds. Zero seconds. Effectively, it will take only six seconds for these three tasks to complete, right? Because they are going to run parallelly. So I'm going to write here. They are going to run in parallel environment. which means that these two tasks are also going to run parallelly so in the 6 seconds task 1 will complete and meanwhile these two tasks with 3 second and 2 second will also complete so this is how multi threaded programming work right so here we have the next one which is the asynchronous and mostly in the interviews even i have faced this question in an interview uh what is the difference between multi threaded and asynchronous programming they are close to each other and uh, many programmers believe that they are uh, same and they, this is a misconception this these two are different uh, strategies right so what happen is the task are here which is these three task and the cpu what the cpu does is cpu does not assign three different worker threads but only a one worker thread right so cpu will assign only one thread of execution now what will happen here is when we are considering asynchronous first i'm just going to make some uh, show you and define this task one here so basically in task one let's say this task one is going to perform the task in the first 3 seconds so i'm going to mark a green line here so in these 3 seconds the task was working something and here i'm going to use a red marker to show that this is actually for the fourth and the fifth second which you can see here the task was actually waiting for some other operation and in the sixth second the task was actually completed right such type of task let's consider an example of such type of task so we can consider here that task 1 is actually a network request uh task so the task 1 will take first 3 seconds to send the request right so we are considering networking here so first 3 seconds are taken by this task 1 to send the request to the server the next 2 seconds which is the fourth and the fifth second which are basically 2 seconds the task 1 is actually waiting for response right so for these two time slots the task 1 was waiting for response from the server and then at the 6th second the server gave the response and this was completed right now you can see here that what happened is in asynchronous the cpu assigns worker thread to complete the all the three tasks so this worker thread will first try to complete the task 1 so when it is trying to execute the task 1 in the first second it it can see that uh, it is actually working for 3 seconds it is generating request so it is not waiting for some response so what will happen is this task 1 is going to run for the first 3 seconds so after the first 3 seconds we know that there is a wait of 2 more seconds so what this worker task will do is after these 3 seconds it is going to switch to the task number 2 so this is an important concept here that the cpu initializes a single thread to complete the task 1 but this task actually has 2 seconds wait time so what happen is in in asynchronous environment the task 1 will take 3 seconds so the worker thread is actually working for these 3 seconds but as soon as it realizes that it will have to wait for some seconds so it does not wait for those seconds it just moves on to the task 2 now task 2 will take 3 seconds so for the first 2 seconds right for the first 2 seconds the worker thread 1 is executing task 2 and after these 2 seconds it got a response so when the task 1 got a response it is going to switch back to task 1 then it is going to complete this task and after that right it will take one second to complete the task and after that it will again come to this task 2 to complete the rest of the task which is 
remaining in the third time slot. So after that, it will move to the task three, right? So you can see that effectively how much time it will take to complete the three tasks using the asynchronous environment, right? So first we do the first three seconds. Then we are going to add two seconds, right? These waiting time are actually going to cancel here because in these two seconds, the task was not, the worker thread was not waiting. It switched to another task, which is task two. And here it will take two more seconds. After these two seconds, it is going to come here. And on the sixth second, it is going to complete the task one. So at this position, task one is completed. It took one second for the task to get completed, right? For these two seconds, uh, task two was, a, two was actually uh, being uh, in operation, right? Now what will happen is task two has one more second. So we will add it. And then we have the task three, which takes two seconds to complete. So I'm going to write two here. So what is the result here? You can see three plus two, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right. So it took nine seconds for the worker thread to complete this, these, all these three tasks. And you can see that it is less than the synchronous, right? In synchronous, we have 11 seconds. And here in the asynchronous, we have nine seconds. So that's the main reason why uh, this strategy uh, is actually more powerful or you can say more optimized than this strategy because it is actually saving some time here. Now remember this time two seconds which the asynchronous programming has saved is essential because for this time the task was actually allocated in the memory and memory is a very important resource for us. And since memory is very important resource, we want to make sure that memory and CPU usage, right? These two are very important resources uh, in programming. Whenever we are writing code, we make sure that we try to minimize the CPU usage and the memory usage. So here you can see that for two seconds, instead of waiting and wasting the time, the worker thread switched to the task two and that actually saved some CPU usage and some memory also. Here in multi-threaded programming, the three tasks were running differently. So they have, uh, they were running parallelly. So this situation multi-threaded is known as parallel situation. Whereas this situation here, when we switch to some other task, it is known as a concurrent situation. Right, so this is a parallel situation and this is known as concurrence. Now I'm going to give you a very simple example to summarize this all up. So let's say the child, there is a child and he wants to do two tasks. The first task is to draw a painting. Let's say the second one is the English homework. Now what this child does is he first starts drawing the painting using watercolors. And after doing the painting, the watercolors will take some try to dry up. So this child is very smart. What he simply does is he do not wait for the uh, watercolors first to dry up. He, uh, he simply in that meantime, he started his English homework, right? So what happens is he's actually saving up some time here. So instead of waiting for uh, the watercolors to dry up, he switched to the English homework. When the painting was done, what he does is he packs up the painting and then he again moves to the English homework. This type of situation is known as a concurrent situation or an asynchronous situation. If the child is not smart, he will first do the painting. He will wait for the watercolors to dry. Then he will pack up the painting and then he will start doing English homework, which is a synchronous environment, right? There is one more strategy the child can use, right? What he can do is he will say that, okay, I don't want to do the painting. I don't want to do the drawing work or the English homework. So what he does is he uh, tells two more people, which is, let's say this one is his cousin and this one is his mom, right? So what he does is he assigns this work to the cousin. He says that, can you 
he uh, says to his cousin that please uh, do the drawing work for me and he says his mom to do the english homework so basically in both the situation you can see that they both are going to work parallelly and this is actually a threaded environment so this is a good explanation a good explanation and this is a good analogy here to understand what exactly are the differences between two now the next question the interviewer will definitely ask you is which of these multi threaded versus asynchronous which one of these is a better approach so now you will have to realize that it depends on the situations it depends on what these tasks are both of them are efficient and they are used in certain situations so as a programmer you will have to think about what is the situation and how you are going to use the programming strategy are you going to use asynchronous or you are going to use the multiple threaded right so first of all whenever you see that we uh, we have three different tasks and they are long tasks they are going to take a lot of cpu usage you can use multi threaded programming but there is a problem with the multi threaded programming that you will have to make sure that these are actually uh, working uh, independent of each other and if uh, one worker thread is actually dependent on the process executed by another working worker thread you will have to do the management you will have to manage the race conditions right then you will have to manage some other things as well such as deadlocks so basically i will explain what a deadlock is so in this case in this analogy here you can see here that the child will have to manage the cousin and the mom he will have to explain what type of painting he wants he will have to explain his mom how to do the homework and what other things here right so the child needs to do management of these worker threads here similarly here also in multi threaded environment we need to manage these worker threads so when you want to execute these three tasks which are basically simple tasks and some waiting time is also involved you can use asynchronous environment right so basically that's all for this tutorial if you have liked this idea of uh, making these uh, videos on these tricky questions that are being asked uh, in the interviews related to conceptual based and how you will explain all of this to an interviewer if you have liked this a strategy make sure to like this video and also subscribe our channel thank you academy make sure to press the notification bell icon also you will get notified whenever the new video comes in so that's all for this tutorial thanks for watching